It's now 1957, and you make your TV debut where you, re you receive your first national, national exposure, I believe, on Groucho Marx's You Bet Your Life. Yeah, that was very, very, very fun, yes. Fun. Please, if you would, explain how you got on the show, if you can recall, and what was it like being on the show and standing next to someone who you certainly, I'm sure, admired? Oh, wow. Everybody in the world bows to Groucho and, and the Marx Brothers for their wonderful comedy and the great movies and, and Groucho for his uh, wonderful, he was a great entertainer. Uh, <clears throat> I was playing here in Hollywood uh, at a very chic, chic, small club on La Siena called John Walsh's 881 Club. And uh, some advertising people thought I li liked my talent, liked what I was doing. It was so different. Well, I, I wasn't doing anything that I'd ever seen, anyone had ever seen in their lives. This is what got me ahead so fast. And they wanted to help me. So they, this was Goodell Productions who were doing You Bet Your Life. And they had connections and they got me onto the show. And that was how I got that. What did you make? What did I make? You mean money? Uh, yes. Oh, nothing. I mean, whatever it was, scale. Plus, I didn't get the right answer. I didn't win anything. Talk about the experience. Uh, how much direction were you given, if any? And if you would, please, to describe Groucho Marx. He looked at me unbelieving. I must have been a weird-looking thing. <laughs> I had a terrible hairdo. Oh, by then I had become blonde. Oh, little by little, I'm realizing what it means to be theatrical. You, 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 light, I just stripped the hair and made it blonde. That way you reflect light. You, they don't want to come and look at a, a girl with brown hair, please. Especially an ugly girl. And this is my old face, which helped. Because, you, you know, the, in the old medieval days, the court jester was always ugly. He had a big nose, sometimes a humpback, sometimes he was a dwarf. Wore little boots with the little bells, and all clowns wear gloves. So little by little by little, I was getting to my, my persona, and uh, I, I will never forget. I worked when I was working in Boston. The the guy that I worked for there said, uh, "Wardrobe, you should do something about wardrobe." And to me, wardrobes was a piece of furniture where you put clothes in. He meant I should think about dressing more theatrically. Uh, I was still using this uh, black leotard and, you know, pretty much in my own, my own, my old face helped, uh, believe me, and the fact that I knew nothing about makeup. Because, uh, you know, I had this hooked nose, I crooked teeth, but it put me ahead because it helps to be dysplastic. Oh, all right, let's put it this way. Can you picture Liz Taylor delivering a joke? No. She'd have to put it in a basket and take it to the door. Grace Kelly, no way. These great beauties. You see, it helps. Like Martha Ray, too big a mouth, you know. Uh, Carol Burnett, before she's been made beautiful now. But, you know, she had things that... That helped. Being having a dysplastic. In other words, the perfect face is not the right face for a comic, especially a woman. Did your appearance on You Bet Your Life affect your career in no, any way? Not at the time. No, it, it didn't. Believe me. It, it was, you see, when you're unknown, you're unknown. Oh, are you unknown? 